all and welcome to our new video from circuitizers in this webinar series we will be discussing about a company called efil electric so efil is the company which is working for the complete ev ecosystem they are providing ev charging solutions and electric vehicles throughout the india the aim of the company is to enable a tech driven transition to electric mobility in india to know more about the company and its services we have mr mayank jain founder of efil electric with us so let's hear from him hi mayank how are you doing today hi hi good evening yeah i'm doing good how are you thank you thank you for uh, arranging this uh, discussion uh i'm also doing good man thanks for asking and thanks for joining us today so let's dive straight into the questions sure uh can you please tell me in detail why efil electric was formed and what is its mission and vision sure so so basically efil was formed unofficially in 2018 early and it was officially formed in 2019 as a registered private limited entity and uh, i mean the the clear mission of uh, forming efil is basically to accelerate the mobility towards cleaner future through our uh, two verticals basically that we have in house so i'll talk about those two verticals uh, later on and the vision is basically to develop an ecosystem solution for ev domain by 2025 and uh, the values that we have instilled is basically innovation inspiration connection and delivery so that's the core values that we instill in our all the team members and uh, that that's our core values basically and now uh, talking a little bit more about uh, like how we started so efil started in early 2019 as a, a cpo and uh, we installed a couple of chargers of existing oems and then after uh, installing those chargers and observing the market traction and market requirement of of uh, the charging station by end customer or end ev users so that's uh, when we decided because the initial time the traction was very low uh since the number of electric vehicles in the market or the penetration was very low in, in terms of four wheeler and uh, uh, so we observed the revenue and then we pivoted our business model and coming from a automobile research background with more than 10 years of experience and uh, having couple of patents and design applications so this was i think a kind of interest area uh, for me and uh, my co-founder as well that we explored uh, the r&d and then we uh, explored the the whole business model from a oem perspective and that's when we started the development of our uh, electric vehicle chargers so we started with the development of ac uh, 001 and ac smart plug and dc cc2 chargers and now we have a complete portfolio of ac and dc both the chargers so that's i mean uh, about the start of efil and why we started and then another pivot was taken uh, at efil uh, when we entered into the mobility segment as well yeah uh, so what are the models or types of charging solution your company offers basically right now we have uh, both ac category chargers uh, we call it evsc electric vehicle supply equipments and uh, uh, basically so we have ac001 which is a basically three point socket or a three point industrial socket connection as per ara standards or aas standards and then we have ac smart plug which is single point industrial socket and which is gives an output of 3.3 kw and in case of dc chargers we have 15 kw dc ccs2 and 30 kw dc ccs2 with single gun and we have now recently developed our 60 kw dc fast charger of dual gun so that's something that uh, which is recently developed and is now under validation and testing so that's a portfolio of our uh, charging stations okay so our focus is majorly on the four wheeler charging okay okay that's great so as we have mentioned efil ev charging app and cms are best suited for commercial and private charging stations so can you tell us what are its features and how exactly it works yeah so uh, like i said uh, we started as a cpo in early uh, 18 and uh, so we that time we got a white listed application of an existing uh, software solution provided in the market and we observed that the user interface was very poor uh, the features that we received uh, for a cms or or cpu portal access were very limited and there were lack of business analytic tools so then we started uh, brainstorming and, and we started working ourselves on the application part as well so we have developed our cms and the mobile application platform both in house and uh, to to name a couple of smart features is basically uh, you can schedule the booking uh, you can schedule the uh, charges beforehand uh, for example 
uh, let's say uh, you are traveling on a highway and uh, i mean uh, you have to charge your vehicle at home and and you have left uh, home and you are uh, planning to go to let's say from delhi to jaipur okay so you would definitely require a dc fast charging to be done on the highway uh, along the way right so you can estimate how much time it will take to you uh, for you to reach the charging station which is uh, installed in the midway or let's say along the way so accordingly you can book the charger before that so that once you reach the charging station so the charger will be available for you only so you will not have to wait or uh, let's say uh, there might be cases when uh, you went to a location and, and the charger is being charged or uh, any other customer is charging the vehicle in that case you will have to wait or till the time the other customer is done with the charging right so this is just one feature wherein you can uh, do the advanced booking and then additionally couple of uh, uh, new features that recently have rolled out is rfid so you can start the chargers uh, using your own rfid card so no need of booking as well you can do on spot charging as well so the the, the feature that makes uh, our rfid Uh, system stand apart from other existing solution providers is basically you can make your own rfid card out of your existing debit card or credit cards so you must be having a credit card in your wallet right yeah so, uh, you just need to enable the rfid option and uh, through our mobile application you can add that credit card or debit card uh, you can basically enlist that credit card as a rfid tag on our application and on the next on the next move you can use that credit card as a rfid to authenticate the charger so that's something which is innovative and we need not to deliver the rfid card to the end customers so based on their requirement they can uh, basically enlist their own cards as a rfid card so that's really something really great so uh, you have been looking into the ev industry for quite some time so what type of growth you have been observed over these years and what are the key challenges that india is facing in this particular industry so sure. so uh, basically uh, before covid hit the market was little slow in terms of uh, the promotional or i would say in terms of adoption as well but after covid period uh, and observing the the government initiatives and the promotional activities that has been uh, done by niti aayog and other uh, government entities so there has been lot of lot of uh, uh, awareness in, in in end user and people are actually adopting the electric vehicles at a faster rate than expected so you can expect easily a cagr of uh, more than 40% um, annually right and uh, we are expecting uh, more than five lakh charging stations to be uh, installed in next five years so that's something uh, kind of growth that we are expecting in the ev vertical or the ev domain so uh, can you tell us about your latest launch electric vehicle mobil e3w uh, what are its specifications and how is it different from the existing electric vehicles in the market so uh, this is basically ev uh, electric e rickshaw segment vehicle okay. and it's made to look like a electric auto which uh, which is a uh, completely covered from the front and uh, the 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 name basically is muv er so it's it's a multi utility vehicle in e rickshaw segment so muv er e rickshaw segment right and uh, uh, it's already a patented product uh, with a it has a feature of uh, convertible seats wherein the customer or the user Uh, can fold the seats and they can get the luggage space inside the vehicle itself so this is something unique which is not there in the market right now and uh, since it is already patented so uh, we have the rights uh, of the complete design as well and further there are co a couple of more features like which makes it stand apart from the existing e rickshaws in the market like uh, both the products that we have mover and hauler so both are lithium ion uh, powered electric vehicles and uh, there's no model with led acid batteries that we have uh, considered in house and also talking about those smart or unique features so again uh, this is first in class uh, electric e rickshaw with dual combi brakes and with dual speed gear mode with digital speedometer so all all this has been uh, developed and uh, uh, basically localized in india so because both the vehicles are fame to approve so that is something uh, 
uh, which we have focused upon like make in india and also the fame to uh, basically guidelines that we are following okay so what's the difference between your e mobility products mover and hauler basic difference is one mover is passenger vehicle and uh, hauler is a like the name itself uh, says like hauler is basically for uh, carrying the load right so hauler is a cargo vehicle which is uh, used for good carrying how did the first prototype charger look like and how you launched that in the market okay so the first uh, uh, couple of chargers uh, that we installed i mean we like i said we initially started as cpu and uh, we started working on the application platform as well so one of the unique things or one of uh, the kind of validation that we have done is, is basically uh, we did the the lab validation along with the field trials we installed a couple of chargers on our books and uh, those chargers are still there on our application and uh, we installed ac chargers uh, on the end destinations and we installed a couple of dc chargers on the highways so the initial chargers that we developed were type 2 and ac001 chargers which are capable of uh, charging the vehicle at a slow or a moderate rate so those were the type of uh, prototypes that we made ac001 uh, 3 kw uh, evsc and 7 kw type 2 charger so those were our initial prototypes and then we entered into the ccs2 uh, product and uh, for for dc categories so what's the role of iot in evil electric telematics talking about iot i would say uh, all of our products are iot enabled because all the chargers have to have internet connectivity to to be working remotely otherwise i mean you can you can uh, operate them without internet connection also you can operate them through rfid cards or you can remove them through uh, pass codes as well but majorly since the charging stations are installed on public locations or uh, are installed uh, let's say on common basis like a common parking lot so that's why all the charges need to be connected to the server and should be remotely accessible so that's why iot is is a must part for any charging station in the market so that's about uh, the charging vertical but in electric mobility segment also uh, both of our vehicles uh, we are uh, like planned for the iot telematics added with the battery so that the vehicles can be basically for the tracking of the vehicle so vehicle telematics and that is also enabled with iot to basically share the location with the end customer so both segment of vehicles the mobility as well as the charging segment so both have uh, iot features in it okay so mayan that's it i'm done with all my questions would you like to add something in this conversation so i think uh, one point that i would like to make here is uh, again since the customers are adopting electric mobility so we are expecting a good uh, like uh, traction and good growth in the market but i think uh, what we are lacking uh, in terms of uh, or what what we need to work upon as a collaborative approach from the industry side is basically to have uh, our local production or local uh, r and d is to be enhanced so that is something which has to be done and which we are doing already uh, at efil we have more than 40% of the team members allocated in r and d uh, out of the total team members that we have and uh, uh, our focus is also on uh, research and development and and uh, we we expect the market to grow and we expect more and more uh, organizations and universities and colleges to to start ev related or uh, uh, power electronics related courses uh, in their curriculum so that more and more young talent can be uh, club together with this ev domain that's uh, one part and second uh, regarding this uh, uh, the shortage of of the raw material that we are facing in in, in our power electronics or the the silicon uh, chipsets that uh, we have to use in all the electronic products uh, now after being after ev being introduced so the number of uh, electronic components have increased so again it has caused a, a little more trouble in, in terms of arranging the component and sourcing the component so still majorly we are dependent on china for chipsets and and uh, uh, pcb ics and other mosfets and other electronic components so i think uh, 
steadily and uh, we'll have to work on those part also if we have to uh, actually do uh, all the make in india uh, successful that's that's what basically i wanted to add so thank you so much ma'am for your time and for joining us today in this conversation thanks a lot all the very best for your future plans and for your future projects thank you thank you sir thank, thank you, you so thank much. you for having me